In this presentation, we will discuss the flow of compilation and simulation within ActiveHDL. You will learn how to specify the design settings and how to run simulations using the GUI or scripts. First, we will need to open a project. Go to the File menu, click on Open, and select the desired project. In the design browser, there are icon markers that determine the compilation status of each source file. Files marked with the blue question mark indicate that they have been modified or have yet to be compiled. Observe that there is no compilation data within the working library. Before performing compilation, verify or modify your settings by going to the design menu and select settings. Under the Compilation option, you can specify settings for each type of source file. For VHDL source files, you can specify the standard version as well as Enable Debugging by checking the Enable Debug option box. For Verilog source files, you can include directories and Verilog libraries, and similar to the VHDL source files, you can set the standard version as well as Enable Debugging. Click OK when you're finished. To compile your source files, select the file and under the design menu, select Compile. In the console window, you can observe compilation messages such as a successful compilation. A successful compilation is also denoted by the green check mark next to the source file. In the working library, you can now observe the compiled design unit. Design units denoted in bold indicate the selected top-level unit. An alternative way to compile a source file, right-click the source file and select Compile. If you receive errors during compilation, as denoted by the red X, the error messages will be printed in the console window. Double-clicking on a message in the console window will take you directly to the error within the code. After fixing the errors, Recompile the source file until a successful compilation is achieved. You can observe a newly compiled design unit within the working library. You can compile multiple files within the same design by selecting the Compile All option. In the working library, you can observe all of the compiled design units. When you use the GUI to compile your source files, the commands that ActiveHDL used can be seen in the console window. You can generate a macro script that contains these commands. You can generate a macro by right-clicking on your design, select Design Compilation Order, and select Generate Macro. Alternatively, you can right-click your design and select Generate Compilation Order Macro. Type the name of your macro and click Generate. Double-clicking the macro in the design browser will open the file in the HDL editor. You can observe the compilation commands for all of your source files within your design. To initialize your simulation, you can right-click on the top-level unit within the working library and select Initialize Simulation. Alternatively, after a top-level unit is selected, you can also go under the Simulation menu and select Initialize Simulation. To view a new waveform window, you can click on the New Waveform icon in the toolbar, or under the File menu, click on New and select Waveform. You can add individual signals to the waveform by right-clicking the signal and select Add to Waveform. If you want to add the entire top-level unit, right-click the unit and select Add to Waveform. You can run the simulation using the Run buttons in the toolbar, or you can use the Run options under the Simulation menu. 
For a timing simulation, you need to point to an SDF timing delay file. In the design settings, under simulation, click on SDF and observe which SDF files are available. If you're using a script, include your source file, test bench, and be sure to point to the desired SDF file using the dash SDF type switch. To verify that you ran a proper timing simulation, go to the console window and scroll until you see the SDF messages about the number of SDF signals read. Thank you for watching our presentation.